Uh, we're uh, kind of waiting for Facebook, although I think there we go. Okay. Hello, everybody. How are you? It's, uh, let's say it's Monday. And if it's Monday, it must be the pop up show. And there are a whole bunch of people waiting. So let's not hesitate. Let's get them all in here. Here they go. Here's uh, Charlene Solis, Charlie Wallace, Mark Thorner's here, Marjorie's here, Andrew Deutsch, Len LaFrisco, Francine Witt. Uh, and uh, let me see here. Uh, and, uh, of course, the ever-popular Edward Berger. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, boy. How are y'all? Good. Good. I'll have a nice weekend. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Good to see Mark Thorner here again. Hi, Mark. Hey, Alex. Have you found a job yet? <laughs> uh, am, I, am I actively looking? Is the question. So I am taking my. I'm taking my time. I'm not rushing. You're not rushing to get back to work. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, do you think it's going to be? Uh, are you going to look for work? Or are you figuring eh, maybe this is it? Maybe maybe it's retirement time. Kind of both. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. How no, old are you, Mark? Fine. What are you leaning towards? It's not, but I just might want to do something just to keep busy. Well, that's what I did here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hey, start a podcast. There are only 30 million other people doing them. <laughs> no. <laughs> in, other words, you, you, in other words, you've watched this and figured it's a waste of time. No, it's just that, that's another discussion offline. <laughs> <laughs> we've we've both seen this play out how many times from the nineties? Yeah. Yeah. Well anyway, he worked for a big box store and all of a sudden one day, goodbye everybody. How long were you with them? About nine years. About nine years, yeah. That's how long I was with uh Series yeah. XM. Because I couldn't get any broadcast design work down here. Gee, you know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, you know, you might want to wind up having a, oh, I don't know, why don't you start an advertising agency for um, uh, for abortion clinics? How's that down there in Florida? That would go over real well, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, right. Yeah. They'll burn my house down. <laughs> <laughs> Hello to everybody. Hello, uh, Charlie. How you doing? Doing great. He always has the best T-shirts. <laughs> Would you care to read your T-shirt to us? Because we can't <laughs> read. What? English is important, but math is important. <laughs> <laughs> math is important. Okay. <laughs> Hello to uh, Charlene Solis. How's everything in your life? Good. Really? Um, yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, oh, oh, Andrew Deutsch, how are you doing? I'm doing swimmingly well. Swimmingly well? I heard someone say that the other day and thought it sounded ridiculous. So now I'm saying it. <laughs> yeah. I heard that and someone in a, in a meeting I was in mentioned he was from some town in Minnesota. And another guy in the room said, oh, my uncle died there once. <laughs> I still don't know what that means. <laughs> no one seemed to catch it but me, and I sort of let it go. <laughs> a very, very interesting um, note last week after the show when we were talking about uh, uh, copyright infringement and how long a thing stays into copyright and it's for the life of the composer or whatever. And you wrote uh, to me saying what? Well, the, the, there was a question of whether that composer uh, who died in the 70s stuff was in the public sector. And I said, the rule is that it's it's it only stays in the public sector until the composer's done decomposing. So it takes about... <laughs> <laughs> it even makes me laugh after the show. <laughs> but it was such a lively conversation, I figured I wouldn't derail it for the first time. Oh, once. okay. Yeah. Once. Uh, and uh, oh, hello uh, once again to our the voice of of uh, of the uh, of the pop up show, Edward Berger. That's right. That's the second time you introduced me today. 
<laughs> you know what I should do? I, I, oh, that, well, I, I, yeah, well, I, yeah, I guess I, I'm out of it today. So don't, don't please. No, that's okay. That's okay. I've got a case of the Bidens today. Uh -oh. oh, no politics. <laughs> you mean King Biden? The Supreme Court just well, gave him full point. immunity to do what Come he wants. So okay. He's going to arrest the Supreme Court. He's going to. He's going to have Trump uh, sent to a work camp in Siberia. It's going to be <laughs> <laughs> Get him a clear and present danger to the safety of the United States. Yes. Yeah. He's he's got every right, and and no one can question his motives in court. So yes, yeah, send him to Gitmo. <laughs> What was that? I said to Marjorie the other day. We had a a whole day of this. This with the with the first with the Biden thing, and then with a bunch of other things the Supreme Court had, had done. And I said, Marjorie, mark this down. This is the day democracy died. Yeah. yeah. You know. And I, I think we're going through it right now. Peace by peace. Well, it's at the hands of the Supreme Court. This yeah, is yeah everything political. now political. This is just you know talking about what is and it's really it's very dangerous I, these people are a, a danger to us and uh, they don't even know how to be legal themselves so you know how many of you have a valid passport i'm just curious <laughs> 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 yeah but it might not be valid too uh, too soon because who knows what the yeah. next supreme court thing is going to say <laughs> you know it may pass i should renew mine now what? I should renew mine now. <laughs> yeah, when's, when's yours going out? In two years, but I could do it before. Yeah. yeah, yeah not that mine, far mine goes away in, uh, let's see here, in 2000 uh, and uh, 2029. Who knows if I'll be around to, you know, renew it. But, you know, I've renewed it. Did we renew it having getting the special stuff and everything on it? You can do it online now. Oh, really? But no, there's yeah. kind of special extra thing or something. Extra pages? No. When, when I used to travel, I had four sets of extra pages because I was on the road so much. My passport looked like a book. Yeah. Oh, well, they don't they don't uh, stamp passports as much as they used to. If you go throughout yes, Europe, they do, Alex. If, if you go through Europe, you go from Italy to, to England, let's say, I used to get my passport stamped. You don't get it stamped anymore. Yeah, most no, countries once you're outside in... of the EU stamp your passport. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, there are less places they stamp your passport. Is what I'm saying. In and it's on in, it's on entry into Europe and then exit. Yeah, yeah. And I think I have I have a problem that uh, we. Uh, I think when I got my new passport, well, we still have my old passport. My, my China stamp was gone. Uh, you, you need a full page visa from their embassy and then they stamp it same with india saudi arabia a lot of countries require wow. you through the consulate did we get a visa marjorie for where for china oh yeah did mm -hmm. i have a visa yes I had to and it was a whole scary. yeah I, the scariest I one i had was saudi because if you had i had the the arabic translated on the visa and it basically said the person who sponsored my visa had to sign me out of the country, I wouldn't be allowed to leave. So oh, I had a job offer there years ago, and the, you, you, I would have been running a very large business making a crap load of money. But the rule is that at the end of the term of the contract, they, they have to sign you out of the country. And if they choose to not sign you out, you're stuck there until but they, you go there for a two-year contract. You mean if, they, if somehow, let's say the guy who signed you in, yeah. Yeah. Right, who's supposed to sign you out drops dead There's someone in his chain of command would then be able to sign you out yeah were but, you, uh, you, were you, you can't get a visa without a sponsor and if the sponsor decides that you've done something wrong or that it's not he's not ready for you to leave yet by the way i said he which is the right pronoun because there's no saudi woman who's allowed to sign anything um, <laughs> you know, so any any of the any of those wonderful uh, uh people who want to get upset about gender go over there <laughs> were you ever you ever ever worried that you wouldn't get them to sign you out no no because i was i was there visiting a factory and uh, several factories and and doing business i was did you, I did you in fact make a crap load of money no no i turned the job down i mean it was it was that job i would have been paid more than i've ever made in five years combined it was big money 
but I wasn't going to subject my family to it. And I wasn't going to. Risk and that was for just being a janitor, right? <laughs> well, yeah. 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 Cleaning up that Saudi crap. <laughs> oh, God. I was, the, the worst part about it being a janitor there is, is all that sand gets in all your orifices and stuff. It's really uncomfortable. <laughs> okay. It's true. <laughs> I was, I, when I was there, I was visiting, it was 126 degrees outside. Are you Walked serious? into a factory inside was 136 degrees it was up on the wall sweating like a monster came out in a sandstorm and kicked up and the sand burned this side of my face i looked like a like a batman curtain. was that about the time you decided you weren't going to take a job in saudi arabia <laughs> no that was that was after i was i was there on on different business but the irony guess what the factory was making that i visited glass air conditioners Oh, <laughs> really? Yeah it, air conditioner. yeah, it was an air conditioner factory. So why didn't they put a big air conditioner in their factory? Because because Saudis don't work and all of their employees are guest workers. So it was all Filipinos yeah. and Indians working in there. And they don't care because they're not human because they're not Arabs. Yep. It's, that's, it that's really, cool. it's, it's, a, it's, it's the most uncomfortable place I've ever been. When I came out of the hotel, there's a big plaza and a stand up on the, and I asked the guy what, what goes on in the plaza. Oh, that's where they behead people. They had behead people yeah if you get caught dealing drugs in saudi arabia that's where they cut your head off and i said that drives me crazy how, how, how can somebody just get walked up on stage and not fight and they're going to kill me i'm going to i'm going to make a scene oh you can't do that what do you mean i can't do that well they drug you before so that you're docile oh, so if you get God. caught dealing drugs they give you drugs and they cut your head off what a what a pleasant place to be wow <laughs> wow have you ever been there mark mark's nodding his head like crazy no, but my one of my best friends, who was a retired army officer, had to spend time there, and I heard everything about this place, and I'm like, yeah. And also, um, one of the members of the Duck's Breath Mystery Theater, mm -hmm. English, out in uh, Dubai, mm -hmm. and boy, did he post, he blogged like crazy. Uh, the guy who played Dr. Science, out of all people, mm -hmm. and very eye opening. He got he made very good money, but he couldn't wait for the contract to finish to get out. Dubai is a whole other different kind of crazy. Yeah, it's 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 the most bizarre fake. I went to the mall. They have a they have an indoor ski hill. It's basically an indoor. Do they cut hill. heads off at the mall there? <laughs> no, they don't. They don't do much beheading in Dubai. They, 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 oh, okay. they, that's where all the Arabs go to misbehave. But, but it's you funny. drive around, you drive around in Dubai, and there's all of these gorgeous, massive condos. And at night, there's no lights on, because that's where all the drug money and dirty money in the world goes to to hide. They buy condos and, <laughs> and wow. put it in those in those places. Really? It's, oh, it's it's it, it, it you you it's like being at at Disney World with hijabs. <laughs> it's it's just very everything looks fake. Everything had to be brought in. It's uh, it's a it's a different world. You know, when you fly like into Saudi Arabia before you arrive, the flight attendants go through the whole plane like crazy people and gather up any kind of alcohol that was in the service, warn you about not having magazines that might have a picture of like a, a lady's shoulder or whatever's not allowed because they'll they'll get you at customs. Wow! And they lock it all up. It all has to be completely locked up because if somebody has alcohol on the plane, the flight crew gets blamed. Yeah, I, 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 I bet I bet you Jared Kushner never had to deal with any of that. What do you think? That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, I'm sure he, I'm sure that he had rules he had to follow. Yeah. No, no. Once you get once you get behind the wall. So so we that day that I was at the air conditioner factory, we left there and we we drove super fast to get to a restaurant, the the Saudi TGI Fridays in in Jeddah, and as soon as you get inside the building. The prayer begins. Outside. And by the way, at the TGI Fridays, uh, they only cut off genitalia there. So, you know. I, yeah. And it's very painful, by the way. But that's a yeah. different story. Yeah. So, so anyhow, they the, the curtains go down on the outside of the building for the prayer. You hear the prayer thing going outside. And they wheel out a cart of, of, of booze. And then all the business people are all having something to drink. And then as the prayer is about to end, they come through. They guard it all up. They put it in the safe. They lock it up. And. It's back to you have to drink it before the prayer is over. Well, that prayer takes a while. You know, Does it? You, you got to get all the grammar right or the world will fall apart. <laughs> yeah, you right. miss you miss a word. You miss a sentence in, in those prayers. Boy, wow. 
Wow, well, that Marjorie like that. and I have been looking for a great place to go on vacation. Would you suggest That's not on my it? list? No, I, you know what? Um, I don't think so. No, no, okay. Because no. I was going to say to Marjorie. I, also, just yeah. just in case you were curious, Gaza is probably not a good place to go right now. Either. <laughs> I've heard about that. I've heard about. They've it. got the Strip, the Gaza Strip, but it's it's not the kind of strip. Yeah, the fuck. It's not like the Vegas Strip. A little bit different. Yeah. Oh, I don't think Israel is a great place to visit right now either. I actually think your idea of going to visit Chisholm up there, that part of Canada, mm -hmm. is amazing. Yeah, gorgeous. It's really? gorgeous. If you or don't get, go in the winter. Or, or get in but, touch with uh, Bree and go visit Kuala Lumpur. Yeah, that too. Malaysia is really nice. Wow. Yeah, a little congested, but... Uh, I hear uh, Vietnam is nice now. It is. It mm -hmm. is. Very nice people, great food. Lots yeah. of things to see. Isn't it amazing how in a short period of time, or at least I thought it was a short period of time, but it's got to be at least 30 years, right, since the war was over in Vietnam? Yeah. Well, how long after after World War II were Americans buying Volkswagen? You know, you're right. Yeah. It's almost like a war never happened, you know? Mm -hmm. um, in fact, uh, uh, Brian, uh, your, uh, your lady is from Vietnam, isn't she? Uh, there's somebody in my house that's from Vietnam, yes. So <laughs> I've been so I've been there. <laughs> Gotta be correct. So I've been there like four or five times and I've the first time I was there, I went from North Vietnam to South Vietnam and went to a bunch of cities and, and it's gotten ten times better since then. That was like fifteen, sixteen years ago. The last time I was there like three years ago and it's it's even more more clean, more I mean they, they have a river down in one city, one popular city, and they have signs on there saying, if you catch anybody soliciting, uh, report them at this phone number and you'll get a reward. And so everything is so clean. And you go on like uh, Instagram or something like that, and you go and you Google that, you'll see these videos of, of the cities that I've been in, and they're so beautiful, really, really nice. So did you, you went to Hanoi, obviously. Yes. You were yeah, I went to Hawaii where the big battle was. I, there's some really places I really wanted to go. How, but let me ask you this. Let me, on the, on the let me ask the you The most this. beautiful beaches, too. The Americans went in there and decimated the country. You know, I mean, we lost, but we decimated the country in the process. You go back as an American, and it's what, 15 years later, maybe? Something like that? How do they? How do they feel about Americans? Fifteen years later, of what? This it's twenty twenty four right now. That's twenty four years. <laughs> you gotta understand, this is a long time ago from the war. But what, what um, year? What year was the Vietnam War over? About 1970? 1975. years ago. Yes, yeah, almost fifty years ago. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, but, you... but so okay. So so there's a big difference from the first time I went. So this last time I went, the first time I went, I actually had people on Facebook that were actually some friends of mine saying, like, why are you going to put money into that country? It's a communist country and blah, 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 you know. And now it's like the norm. A lot of people are going there. Is is North Vietnam still communist? Well, I think the whole country is still communist, right? Yeah, but, communist, yeah. But, but I, you you I wouldn't you, know it, though, to, because well, they don't seem to align themselves with, like, North Korea and the Soviet, you know, and Russia. And, yeah. Uh, but, and uh, when I when I went to Hoi An, like up in North Vietnam, they were like in shock to see me. And this is 15 years ago, but they were shocked to see me. I mean, not many Americans there. But then you go down to Saigon. By the, you know, you, as the more south you go, the more tourists I would see. Uh, Halong Bay, which is really beautiful. That one I saw a lot of tourists from different countries. And then you come down to uh, Saigon, and then you see Americans all over the place. When did you meet your significant other? Where? Where? Yeah. San Jose, California. Really? <laughs> I, mean, I, I didn't go stop. I didn't go. My, one of my friends met his wife there. Not met his wife, but got a tour for his wife. And so I said he went window shopping because it was like, see the girl over there. And when, when you told me you went to you know Vietnam, I thought to myself, that's where he met her. No, no, no. no you no. had to come all the way back to San Jose to marry somebody. Or not marry, but live with somebody. Who? Well, my first wife was Vietnamese. Yeah. Huh? My first wife was Vietnamese. Was she? Oh. Yeah, yeah. But we had no kids. Yeah. And your present, the lady, is Vietnamese as well, right? The lady who lives in my house. 
no longer a couple. Am I, am I am I am I feeling a sense of tension there when we bring that up? Nothing for the show, but maybe. So, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, yeah. so she yeah. So Vietnam is definitely a very beautiful place you should go to if you can. It, it's yeah. it's awesome there. If you want more rustic, you do Cambodia or Laos. They're both beautiful, also. Are they Cambodia. really? Uh, is on my bucket list. Angkor. Yeah. Wat. That I want Singapore. To, yeah, Singapore. It, isn't it amazing that all those places were kind of an access of evil, at least so far as we were concerned? And now, yeah. it, what, 45 years later, we say it's all just, it's like it never happened. Well, we still, we still got to say the hell out of Myanmar, which was Burma. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. That place is dangerous as hell. Yeah. For Americans. Yeah. I wouldn't, I, I was there once, but. I was not comfortable being there. Why? Because it was clear that I had to pretend I wasn't an American. Oh, really? Yeah, no. I, I was with two Brazilians, and and I, I purposely faked my accent in English whenever I spoke English. But we spoke Portuguese the whole time. Well, you go to places of great danger, don't you? I, I have, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Ever been to Detroit? <laughs> I, don't have, I don't have the guts for that. No, but I mean, I was in I was in Nicaragua when the civil war broke out. I've been twice, almost kidnapped in Colombia. So yeah, mm -hmm. I've been around the block a few times. But but you know, like Colombia now is really safe, and a lot Paradise. of Americans are going there too. Yeah, Medi Medellin is Medellin, one of the most yep. beautiful cities I know. Yeah, springtime every day, seven, all year. It's mm -hmm. it's gorgeous. When I went there back in the late eighties. Um, it was, it was very dangerous. Yeah. My, my hotel room door once in Bogota was six inches thick. It was a um, hotel for, for diplomats and, uh, I wasn't a diplomat, but the, the, the hotel room had a, a, it was like six inches thick and it was steel to open the door and close the door took, took effort, but nobody was coming in to rob me at night. Well, how many here have a bucket list of some place they'd like to go? Oh, sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Marjorie, of course. Yeah. Uh, what, what's on your bucket list, Charlie? Well, I've never been to Europe. I want to yeah. go. Never been to Europe. Oh, okay. I haven't either. Who? Where? Oh, you haven't either? Yeah, nope. I'm amazed. You live in New York. <laughs> you know, when I, the, the time I finally decided to go to Europe for the first time was when I was in New York because it's just, it's close, <laughs> you know. It's yeah. closer than when you're in in California. You don't think about going to Europe, okay? It's just not on your bucket list. Go, go to the bathroom, and they're European. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! Once again, he strikes again, ladies and gentlemen. Jeez. I don't take credit for that one. Yeah, um, but um, uh, you know, I'm surprised you have never been to Europe. You know, uh, to me, to, to to this day, it's a it's just a big jump across the pond. Of course, it takes. All three a, of my kids have been. I haven't been. <laughs> you've never been. No, I hadn't been since uh, eight weeks ago. So you know, it yeah. happens. Yeah. You know, I what I loved were the days when I said, you know, I think I'm going to go to Paris. And I just call up the airline and buy a ticket, right, for tomorrow. And I'd get on the plane and I would go. And before I went there, maybe I'd write a, a, or call a, a hotel or whatever in, or a travel agent to get me a room in, uh, in say, Paris. And I'd go. And uh, it was never, never seemed like a big thing. And you went to the airport. I mean, in those days, you didn't have to show up an hour beforehand. You could show up 10 minutes beforehand and just run to the gate, you know, and show them your ticket and get on the plane. It's not that easy anymore. I mean, Marjorie and I are finding it hard to get out. We'd really? like to go. And we really what we should do is just book a plane somewhere. You know? Europe has a new... Uh, pre-filing thing that I, th I don't know if it's gone into effect or not where you have to register before you go no not yet it hasn't gone no. in effect yet I, I read something about it yeah they pushed it out a little, I think to next year 
Okay. Free filing? Yeah, it's like a it's not a visa, but it's a it's a, a tax. Visa. They want seven dollars. <laughs> yeah. It used to be when you would travel in like South America, you get to the airport, you'd always have to pay a, a, a tax to get on the plane to go to the next country. It was an exit tax. And and Europeans have to pay to file to come into the US when they come. So they've come up with a policy to get even. Well, gee, it means we gotta pay you, you gotta pay us. So what do I have to do after they Initially, yeah. Len said it's it's pushed off, but it would be something the airline would give you instructions to. You'd probably just go online and pay a fee and get a sticker. Jeez, a gold star off your forehead. I just want to go places, you know. But I mean, you can't do it in the same way you used to do it. Like we were thinking, maybe taking a cruise, so we check cruise lines. Well, when do you want to go? Next de October, next December. Yeah. And I'm going. How about tomorrow? Oh well, we don't. You want to go tomorrow? Uh, there's tons of last minute cruise stuff. Out yeah. so you got to get with an agency that does that. They're pe they yeah. get cancellations, they've got vacancies, and they'll get you on. And yeah, sometimes it's people cheaper who just that decide, way. And it's cheaper. I know people who just decide on a Monday, hey, this weekend, let's go do a cruise. And I've never heard of one. Where, 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 one. where, are the, where do you find that? Um, don't, don't they have a website, last minute cruises or something? Yeah, yeah, there's, there's one. Happened, I don't but... know that that's a good one. I'll, oh, I'll, I'll, look, I'll ask Vacations to go somebody. is what I used to use. Unless, unless they're paying me, I'm not endorsing one on, a, on your <laughs> yeah, but let us know. that we have. Well, we have a we have a cruise that you can go on right now. Uh, if you can be ready tomorrow, it's uh, with on the Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and Alex, I just looked up that fee to get into Europe. If you're over 70, you'll never have to pay it, so don't worry about it. Oh, really? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, the advantage of being over 70. <laughs> that and, Wonderful. Uh, that is yeah, coffee at off. some burger joint. You're going to save $7.70. So there you mm. go. Look who's here. We got a guy who used to call the uh, night show, and uh, now he's calling here. He's a really nice guy, Jason McKinney. Um, we'll wait for him to. Um, if, if, if I'm not mistaken, Alvin, there, there's vac Jason. Vacations, vacations to go is one of them. There's, I, I know there's one that's like something like cheaper cruises or cheap cruises. Yeah. But, but I know, I know that vacations to go is one. Mm -hmm. Send the links. Yeah. Uh, oh, hello to Jason, by the way. Jason, I, have you ever gotten out of this country? Oh, yeah. I go to Mexico like every couple of years. Oh, okay. I love it. Are you Mexican? Yeah. See. <laughs> And he lives in Detroit. <laughs> I was gonna say that's what I heard, heard somebody say Detroit. I was like, hey, did somebody say Detroit? <laughs> all, I think, all I could think of is when he said C was the old Jack Benny thing with Mel Blanc, you know. Uh, are, are you from Mexico? C. What's your no, uh, no. you know the C C and then they say, What's your name? Sai. <laughs> you have a sister? C. What's her name? Sue. <laughs> What does Sue do anything for a living? See, See. what does she do? So, so. You know. <laughs> but you forget, Benny always used to go, I'm going to regret asking this. <laughs> you knew, you just knew. Yeah. And how they kept, how Mel Blanc kept a straight face, I'll never know. I think because I was he didn't pay good money to keep a straight face. <laughs> I mean, that was some brilliant writing, you know. And but could you do that routine today, or would it be considered racist? I think so. No, because it has to deal with Hispanics, and it's okay to be racist to them. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, yeah, just look at society, man. Mexican jokes all the time, and mm. yeah, the you, ones still well, okay. as someone who is Mexican, then do, are you bothered when you hear those? Uh, those if it's a bad joke. Oh, okay. <laughs> One of my favorite ones is why doesn't Mexico have an Olympic team? Why? Anybody who can run, jump, or swim is already over here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I didn't say it. He said it. Yeah, like, excuse me Fox. while I'm at work and I lower the volume. Ed <laughs> Fox used to tell one where he just got like, arrested. Just like I can tell Jew jokes. I don't know many of them, but I know one. Uh, oh, you might get in trouble for that too. Yeah. Two, Jew, two Jews walk into a bar and they buy it. Yeah. <laughs> Not 
That's Red, hilarious. Red Fox tells a story. He ran over a Mexican once in Tijuana and got taken to court. And uh, he said, I, you know, I, I don't know how it happened. And the, and the judge said, you didn't see his tamale wagon. He said, I didn't even know the guy's fly was open. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> that was Red Fox. Oh. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, I, I, I got to say this. When I grew up, when I was growing up as a young, a young man, oh, God, was that a long time ago? <laughs> um, there were a lot of jokes about various racial people, right? And when you went to in the theaters, the, it, not when I was a kid, but shortly before I was a kid, and you had like burlesque, you always had what they called dialect acts. And these were people who do Jewish dialects, Italian dialects, and so on. And they were very, very popular. You couldn't do any of them today. You know, and, and uh, I, I grew up at a time when I went, hey, you know, laughing at our accents and everything is is kind of funny uh and none of it was no it was meant to be hurtful or anything like that you know it was a documentary documentary huh? hank azara did the 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 voice what his version of the indian uh the guy uh, Abu, Apu, Abu, Abu, yeah. Apu, yeah. and and there's an entire documentary about how indian people hate that character oh. and I, I mean it's like an hour and a half of of why doing that and then, then, I guess it was on Big Bang Theory. The kid uh, who had that, who was the Indian kid, was on the telephone, talking to customer service. And he was he had an American accent for the only time in the whole history of the show. And the guy said to him, "It's so weird. You were talking on the phone. What, what's with this American accent?" He said, "Well, I was calling customer service, and I thought that if I didn't do that, they would think I was making fun of them." <laughs> uh, <laughs> Oh boy. Well, you know, we've got become very sensitive about that. Um, and maybe I sound old fashioned when I go, you know, it was not hateful. It was not mean. It was not meant to hurt. You know, the only thing is, I mean, we could ask uh, about like black comedians who, by the way, in those days worked, you know, there were a lot of them in movies. And as soon as everybody got uh, politically correct, those guys were out of work. You know, because uh, they played stereotypes uh, yeah. like maids and butlers. Well, only yes, yes. So they um, were so they were out of work. Yes, they, they were out of work. But the point is, they they said, "I liked work. I didn't mind playing maids." You know, I had a paycheck coming in. A great actress like Hattie McDaniel didn't mind playing a maid because playing a maid got her an academy award for crying out yeah. you know mm -hmm. um so you got to tell those people hey i don't want to work anymore because i'm a, a racial stereotype i'll tell you the one racial stereotype that it always bothered me everybody used to put down step and fetch it for yeah. creating a stereotype truth to be known step and fetch it was a very fine com comic actor uh, who had been doing this character for years in vaudeville and brought him to the screen. And everybody said, well, he set a stereotype. No, he didn't set a stereotype. Everybody who imitated him set the stereotype. And because he was so successful, everybody was doing him. So you know, what, what I was just saying, like with Hispanics, is just another example. There's still a TV show on Fox. I think it's called The Cleaning Lady. Stars a Mexican lady, so even on a TV show, you still have to be a cleaning lady. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So she's, I mean, she's granted, there, you know, it was wrong, but in the case of uh, of um, uh, Step and Fetch it, I mean, he worked very hard creating that character, and everybody else came along after him and imitated him and implanted the stereotype in our society. You know, guys like Mantan Moreland. Uh, Willie Best, uh, I could name a whole bunch of them, and the, uh, the Mantan Moreland feet don't uh, fail me now. Yeah. You know? Oh, I seen a ghost. You know, in the movies, he would uh, see a ghost and he would turn white. <laughs> you know. Um, you know who changed things? And uh, um, in, in my memory, Flip Wilson. Yes. Yeah. 
Yes, yes. I thought you the black people can wear dresses. <laughs> Some of us look pretty good in dresses. Okay, Ger <laughs> Ger Ger Geraldine Wallace. <laughs> That's true. But I, what I remembered is is that he would he would tell a joke that that that, that kind of got over the 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 the, uh, the barrier. It's yeah. kind of like um, a, a joke, like uh, um, when he goes to, uh, to a black neighborhood, he would say, "Roll up your windows. Black people live here." You know, and he did a whole you know a whole yeah. thing. Which was really clever. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Uh, were there any other black comedians that broke the stereotype finally? And and N Nipsey Russell. Nipsey Russell. Yeah, Nipsey Russell. Yeah. yeah. Red Fox. Um. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's some Godfrey I, Cambridge. Very good, Godfrey Cambridge. Very. There's good. someone. Yeah. yeah. There's someone that no one remembers anymore. You just mentioned him, and I remembered him, but I yeah. wouldn't have in discussion brought his name up. Yep. And then there was Dick Gregory. Dick well, of Gregory. course. Oh, my God. Dick Gregory is another one. Uh, he became very political, though. In a certain yeah. in he sure time. did. He sure yeah. did. And, but uh, uh, they were the guys. Yeah, Cambridge and Godfrey. Um, Cambridge, uh, Cam Godfrey Cambridge and uh, who was the other Pick one? Me uh, uh, Pick me, Markham. Uh, here comes come the, the judge. judge. Here comes the judge. I don't know. R Rudy Raymore. Well, that's a whole nother class. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Rudy Raymore? Oh, Dolomite. Dolomite. <laughs> he was he was a a total insane character. The guy made more party records that you. Burn your ears if you listen to it. Well, him. try uh, Red Fox sometime. Yeah, but uh, Red, Red Fox. Was when really, I heard really that Red Moore Fox was going to be, when I heard Red Fox was going to be doing a show on NBC or wherever it was, I couldn't believe it because I, the Red <laughs> Fox I knew couldn't spend two minutes on a screen without being absolutely filthy. So was <laughs> Mom's Mabley. Three, three shows. Mom's, Mom's Mabley wasn't dirty. Ma, Ma, does anybody remember Mom's oh, yeah. being dirty? Right. Really? I remember her being dirty. Yeah. She, she, she was. Dad had some records. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> the, the name's not in my head, but the woman who played Aunt Esther. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Wanda Page. Her, her comedy yeah. stuff. Her yeah. comedy stuff was filthy. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. Her, her, her records. Her records were, I mean, Light your ears up, filthy. Very funny. Yeah. But she yeah. was also they. She also performed with Red Fox back in the day. They toured. A, they they did the Chitlin Circuit together. Yeah. Yes, she of course. To, now it makes perfect sense. But back then it was like, oh my god, these two going at it each other. Some of the best insults that could get over TV. <laughs> greatest story. The greatest those, story those. I ever heard, and this is supposedly true because it was told to me by somebody who was there, there when it happened. Red Fox was playing in Las Vegas, and the announcer says, "And now, ladies and gentlemen, Red Fox." And they play da 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 da. And he walks out on stage, and he looks at the audience, and there's only two people out there. And he looks out at the audience, thinks for a moment, and would forget this shit. And he turns around and walks off the stage, and they play him off. Da, 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 da. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I believe it. Yeah. Yeah. LaWanda Page, that was her name. Yes. LaWanda Page, yeah. Yeah. There, you know, the thing is that it, it slowly, the metamorphosis took place slowly. When you got in, you finally got into the Godfrey Cambridges and the, uh, what was the other one we mentioned? Uh, um, Oh God, my mind's a blank now. But the Flip fact, Wilson. huh? Flip Wilson, Flip people like that. It, it slowly changed, you know. And what's what? And what's funny, John Leguizamo, the who's actually a good actor. Yeah, is, he's mm -hmm. this advocate about you know you got to be a Latino to play Latinos, whatever. And then you look at his career, and he's played everything but Latinos, and he, <laughs> he's the biggest hypocrite in all of Hollywood. He played, he played uh, Christopher Columbus, who's uh, who was that? <laughs> he played all these roles that uh, I, I I think based on the new rules, if 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 you're going to voice a bear, you actually have to be a bear. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there, there is a little bit of a point to that, though, because if you look at TV, you know, you don't see the Hispanics out there. We're 20 percent of the population. <laughs> We're not, we don't have TV representation. I'm going to tell you a great story. There's I got a lot of Latinos on TV. Oh, it is starting to, I think, within the last couple of years. Well, but, you can't you know, make a movie without an Asian or you don't get distribution overseas. So there's always got to be an Asian. And mm -hmm. it seems like every show now has got to have a trans person, even though there wasn't one in the script. There's a remake on uh, a PBS of, uh, with, with David Tennant, the guy from Doctor Who, for uh, Around the World in 80 Days. The, the character who's a Frenchman is now a black Frenchman. The, 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 oh, the, yeah. instead of having a detective named fix following him trying to catch him they have a woman named fix who's a journalist whose father wrote the newspaper in 1872 how many female journalists were there and they they, <laughs> they, they, they round out the cast with all of these like they're checking boxes to make sure that they can get distribution rather than the british do, do, the british have been doing that for years but yeah. not for any other reason but that they were colorblind they would have somebody in a show play somebody who was, uh, you know, in the 17th century, a nobleman, and he happened to be a black actor. Yeah. But nobody yeah. said, hey, he's black. There were no black noblemen back then. They just went, hey, that's a good actor playing the part, and that's it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's it took us a, it took that's us a Isn't hmm? that recent? That's recent. I, I think it is. They don't have too many white leads playing Othello on stage in <laughs> Shakespeare. Fight. Yeah. They used to. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm not talking about you. Well, you want to talk about okay, black. Yeah. You, you want to talk about blackface. Anytime even the greatest Shakespearean actors played Othello, they put on blackface. Wells. Yeah. Wells. Wells did it. I always, I always thought casting was to get the most believable person for the role. Well, you know, it's funny. I, I had to tell people once, you know, it's why you call it acting. <laughs> you know, you're acting. You're trying to be somebody that you aren't. And so what if a black person is playing what you would think was a white part? It's just, you know, and the British have always kind of not had been colorblind where that's concerned. I mean, I can go back to old TV shows in England and tell you that they were doing it back then. I think if changing up the story to have a more diverse cast makes the story more interesting, it's great. But when it just looks like somebody was just checking boxes so that they could be OK, that that's the problem. What's her name? That that woman who's a big television producer who's doing uh, what's that show in England, Marjorie? That you're Bridgerton. Watching? Bridgerton. Bridgerton. Yeah, it's Sound color. Rhymes. It's yeah. color. It's colorblind. Yeah. You know, I mean, Shonda Rhimes, I think, is black, so that's the reason why, probably. But it's colorblind. The mm -hmm. lead the male in that thing, the lead romantic lead was uh, was a is a black guy, and he's romancing all these white women. Think of that existing twenty years ago, oh, thirty years ago in this country. People would go bananas over that. You know, why'd you bring up bananas? Because <laughs> <laughs> I like bananas. We always what do we always buy, Marjorie? What do we always have? Bananas. And what do we have that turns brown before we get to all of them? Bananas. 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 Make banana bread. <laughs> oh, bananas. bananas are the greatest. Is it a fruit? Yeah. I guess. It's a fruit. Uh, it's a fruit. It is the greatest fruit nature ever invented because it comes with its own packaging. <laughs> you know? And uh, they're fun to peel and they taste great. Who doesn't? Anybody here not like bananas? Which end do you peel it from? Huh? Stem or the bottom? The not the non-stem side. I always start at the top. Yeah. Try it from the other end. It's easier. The, yeah, that the non-stem. Oh, you you know something? Non -stem. Excuse me. That, that's where I do it from the bottom. Because I go up, I kind of pull it to the side and it just unpeels itself. Yeah. So anyway. Uh, you know, but no, everybody loves bananas. I don't think there's yeah. anybody that doesn't go bananas over bananas. Mm. Uh, um, Marjorie and I always have, don't we always have bananas in the house? Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. just ordered out to, uh, uh, up to our, the store was. Do Leonard's. Do Leonard's. And what did you order? Bananas. One of the things is if bananas. If I order from Costco, what do I order? Bananas. bananas no, we got four, we look we look like a uh, South American jungle, you know, <laughs> you know. And and if you don't get around all of them, they're not that expensive. So you know, yeah. 
Wait, you through. know where you can't find those big bananas like you buy here in the states? Where? Outside anywhere of the else? States. <laughs> anywhere else? <laughs> you know, can't find it. In in South America, Central America, nobody eats those big bananas are for the American market. They don't wow. they don't eat them anywhere. Most of the bananas you get in South America are about like half the size. size. Yeah, but they're but they're Plus called uh, what do they call them? Plantain. That's no, the plantains, well, plantains are, different. Plantains are different. That's a different different thing altogether. It's almost it's like the sweetness heartier. of a potato. Yeah. So yeah. they send us the large ones? Because Americans <laughs> want the big ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. otherwise you got to eat three of them. Yeah. <laughs> They're usually the sweeter, though. Is specific do, they, do they taste better? Does the South American bananas taste better? I think they, so. They're, they're rich. They taste, they're, they're richer. The American ones are much sweeter. They're, they're more sugary. Mmm. See, I felt like they were sweeter down there because, you know, when I go to Mexico, you get real regular, you know, smaller bananas and this always seemed like there's like more of a concentrated flavor in them. But also I thought it was sweeter yeah. too. Yeah, year, years ago, I was selling all the packaging materials and equipment to the fruit packers in all of Central and South America. So I was in all the places where they pack them. And there's the American section. They, that's the stuff going to the U.S. Nobody that's... here would eat that crap. So they say. <laughs> Edward Berger, do you like bananas? Uh, No. Okay. <laughs> I just wanted to hear you say something. Oh, uh, don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> you know what I should do? I should uh, get a hold of you. We should do a little, just you and I personally, uh-huh. Zoom thing, and you can do promos and announcements from for for Gabnet. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's good. You could be the please voice do. of Gabnet. Please do the <laughs> voice of Gabnet. I love. Yeah, it. I think we'll do that. I'll get. I'll get. I'll get a hold of you, Edward. Okay. Just write me on uh, on yeah, right. Facebook and tell me your your email address and uh, right. your address, and I'll write you and we'll set something up, and I'll have you do a couple of promos. Okay, hey, Edward. Is it that you don't like bananas, or they just make your voice sound funny? No. <laughs> yeah, bananas haven't been one of my favorites. <laughs> yeah. Do other people kind of notice your voice? Uh, no. Really, no. the only one. <laughs> Yeah, you're the only one. Nobody's ever said, "Where did you get that voice?" Uh, not that I know of. No, <laughs> really. So, am I being boring by doing it? No, no, no. Go ahead. Go oh, ahead. Okay, all right. I just, I, I, I think it sounds wanted, great. I didn't want to think I was insulting you. No, no, no. You're not insulting me. Oh, no. <laughs> now, I, now I am insulting him. Yeah. Um, yeah, but anyway, uh, let me see here. What else? Where are you coming? Oh, the 4th of July is coming up, huh? That's that right. exciting? Oh, geez. You know, I got to say this. I hate fireworks. Me too. So does my dog. You too, Francine? How many else? <laughs> I used to drive my dogs crazy. Oh, I had, I had uh, you know, when I was a kid, uh, kids love firecrackers okay so we went out and we got a bunch of firecrackers i think we got a few of the cherry bombs you know the the ones you really got to run fast after you light them right they're very loud and uh i we were blowing off firecrackers that's what kids did and i got a call from our neighbor up the hill and she said could you stop going with those firecrackers and i said well why she said, well, my husband, as you know, was a, a war photographer, and he was in the war. He's under the bed right now. Literally, firecrackers and fireworks yeah. were yeah. a bane of people who had, uh, had well, they called it, uh, what did they call it? Uh, shell shock. The shell, shell shock. Oh, shell, shell shock. shock right Today, it's called PTSD, but it was called shell shock in those days. I don't fatigue. He, he said I was just. You know, so I I got to the point. So I never I never blew fireworks off again, and I got to kind of hate them because they go up and they do this thing, right? And everybody goes ooh, like they've never seen it before. <laughs> yeah, well, it makes a mess in other people's yards, and like yeah, so it yeah. drives the dogs nuts. And well, I'm talking about like fireworks, like Macy's does here. I mean, every time they blow off mm-hmm. the fireworks, they're pretty much the same fireworks. Mm-hmm. You know? And so nothing amazes me that way. Marjorie loves them. She looks out our window and goes, ooh, look at that. You know, I'm going, yeah. One year I took photos from the television and posted them on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> you did. You did. Uh, and, it, it, you know, they uh, we, we always have the fireworks on the uh, 
Where is it? Is it on the uh, East River? Yeah. No, it's it's on, on the Hudson now. Oh, this year it's on the Hudson. Oh, this really? Year. Yeah. Really? Because we used to go down to the East River and watch the fireworks. And what was they incredible, alternate, Alex. What was incredible about the 4th of July was it was a great time to stay in Manhattan, not to go somewhere, because it was kind of quiet here. You know? Am I right? Yeah. 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 And you didn't have to, you know. But it isn't that quiet in my neighborhood because here they go out and they buy those just massive fireworks. I mean, some of these things go up and they look like the stuff they're doing downtown. Right. You know? And there was a time when there was a lot of illegal fireworks coming in this country a few years ago. And they started like a month ahead of time. And at night you couldn't go to sleep because it was so loud. Am I right? Did you have the same problem where you were... Uh... Um, uh, uh, Mark, my God, I I just remember sometime in June you just heard this background roar, like it was like all over. And, and this is this is in Florida, right? No, I'm talking growing up in Bay Ridge, Brooklyn. Oh, okay, okay. It was it, you just knew what was coming. You just knew, and I remember one year. This was back when I still lived in Brooklyn in, in the 90s. There were burned cars. I mean, I remember the sanitation department having like two feet deep and spent fireworks. It was just insane what was going on. You know, it's just those memories, you know. And of course, the best memory was probably Operation Sale, the bicentennial fireworks. Yeah. Oh, Okay. Were they nice? Were they good? They were oh, great. That was that yeah. was the start of like, oh my God, they can really put something like they can really do something like this. And that was where up and down the Hudson with the barges, you know, and the East River. I remember one year they televised it and they I forgot what the occasion was though. The other quickly, the the other thing I witnessed firsthand was the fireworks they did for the hundredth. 100th anniversary of the Brooklyn Bridge because I was on a apartment building on the Manhattan side and literally Alex you could feel the temperature go up 20 degrees wow. it was yeah it was one of the most spectacular fireworks displays I ever saw the most and the most unusual fireworks thing I ever did was I had a friend well my psychiatrist actually who had a houseboat in Sausalito, and he could actually take the thing and power it and take it out into the middle of the bay. Wow. They had fireworks that year, of course, over the bay. So he went out into the middle of it. And I'd never seen fireworks where they went up and then they were coming down at you. <laughs> you know, I mean, they they dissipated before they got to the uh, to the water. But, I mean, it was, a, it was spectacular. That was spectacular, doing it that way. Um but you know, so we we get we get the Macy's fireworks thing, you know, and that'll make up for the fact that the parade is getting less and less important every year. Um, do you miss uh, do you miss the do you miss Fourth of July here in Manhattan, Mark? I I miss aspects of it, Alex. Mm -hmm. you I mean, know, do you miss Manhattan? Not really, but there are times when I'm like, oh. You know, but it's all memory based, like it's the past. Well, let's go over to Francine. Francine, are you tired of living in Manhattan yet? No, I like I like it here. It's so convenient. I, I don't really ever do anything because all the tourists are doing things. So everything's crowded, you know, but um, but I like the fact that it's there. I, I do like to go see shows sometimes or um, I just like that because I don't drive. So it would be really hard for me to live. I often said, I've often said, I think the thing you're trying to articulate is I often said that anything you wanted to buy is here. Yeah. Manhattan. I don't care if it's a screw of a certain size yeah. and you can't find it in uh, Oshkosh. Okay. Right. But you can find it in Manhattan because there's some hardware store somewhere that has it. You know, Marjorie, are you sick of Manhattan? No, but I want to get out of it. I haven't been out of it. During COVID, I never left the zip code. Well, I've been married to you for a long time. Let me just tell you, you are out of it. 
<laughs> no question about it. But no, uh, because you you said to me that you wouldn't mind moving out of Manhattan. At some point. I mean, we can't move. The rent we've got here is so well, ridiculously keep, low. Still keep the apartment. And we we start to go places. Twenty five. I don't want to make you all jealous. Twenty five hundred square feet of apartment here, uh, and, and we pay five hundred dollars a month. That's, That's bigger cool. than my house. Of course, bigger than bigger than most houses. A lot of how big is your house, uh, Brian? <clears throat> Uh, twenty five hundred square feet. See, same same size as our apartment. Twenty six. And and it's great too. It, you know, it, I think it's saved our marriage mm -hmm. because it's so. If if I'm mad at her, or I just don't want to see her ugly face today. <laughs> it's not ugly. Excuse me. It's, I don't. I mean that lovingly. Okay. Alex, I, I mean this. <laughs> 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 anyway the point is i can go into the back room and she can stay in the bedroom and we never have to see each other all day it's true it's the only time true. she ever sees me is when i walk down the hall and walk past the bedroom you know and ask what's for dinner yeah and <laughs> what's for dinner. by the way what is for dinner tonight hey <laughs> you're on your own what do you mean yeah. well, I'm on my own you said we had sushi no what no what do you mean no you had. you had sushi. You bought <laughs> sushi. Had sushi. You bought sushi today, right? It's gone, Alex. It's gone. What do you mean it's gone? I didn't eat it. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the garbage now. We had an argument about it. She said we're we're having something or another for dinner. Oh, a meatballs for dinner, because that's what she sent out to Stu Leonard's for. But she bought some sushi. And I had to remind her that we really should eat the sushi the day it comes, because that's when it's the freshest. So if she we eat it tomorrow, it's not going to be as good. Tomorrow make you sick, sushi. Huh? So tomorrow might make you sick. Yeah, yeah, right. No, but it just it loses its freshness. I mean, we, we ate it once like you got it at... You ordered it at 11, it got here at noon, we ate it at 1, and it was incredible. Just incredible. So, anyway. Um, let me see here. we got about three minutes left. Uh, anybody doing anything exciting for the 4th of July? It's going to be How very hard here. Vernon, you've been very quiet this hour. You got anything going on down there in Kentucky? Well, there's a festival that's going on about three blocks from my house, and they always have a fireworks show, but there's a 70% chance of rain that night, so who knows if it goes on. Oh, boy. Well, that's too bad. So, been building any houses lately? He's He builds oh, yeah. old yeah. houses. With, every, where you... every, every Tuesday, I'm with Habitat. I work with ha Habitat. Habitat for the Humanities. And have you got skill from that? I mean, a particular skill? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think I told you, I started there, volunteered in 2013, and I started uh, just working alongside the electricians. And a bunch of these guys were retired electricians who actually worked as commercial electricians. So I picked up those skills from them, and now I'm the master electrician for our crew. <laughs> yeah. But you only do that one day a week? Eh, maybe a day and a half. There's usually a, an extra day here or there where I have to go out and Somebody's doorbell doesn't work, and I have to go fix it. How many? How many? Um, um, how many? Uh, what was? How many days does it take for Habitat to build a house? Uh, it depends on what crew is building it, but generally speaking, it's between twelve and fourteen weeks from start to finish. It takes that long. Wow. Yeah, because you're you're dealing with volunteers. You're dealing. Yeah. With, you know, okay. Vo volunteers are building the house. Sure, it takes six months to a year to build a house anyways. Seems like around here. Yeah, but these houses are for low-income families, and most of them are like three-bedroom, one-bath. You know, 1,600 square feet. You see how they're good. starting to do the 3D printing? Do you know his Habitat for Humanity looked in that at all? It's supposed to be cheaper. I've, I've, I, saw, uh, I saw something on YouTube about that, but no, we're still building it with wood. Wow. 
Well, hey, you know, we're running out of time here, and I really want to thank all of you, uh, um, as usual, for being here. It's a lovely group of people we have here. And uh, I know you're very protective of yourselves, so I'm very protective about who we put on here. It's always right. nice to have... Don't fuck it up, Alex. What? <laughs> Don't fuck it up. <laughs> no, if I really want to improve it, I wouldn't show up, okay? But... <laughs> Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, Mark is kind of a newer addition for most of you here. He, I mean, he's, you've called it before uh, in other times, but he's, since he's out of work, he's available more. Uh, <laughs> but it, it's Sorry, Mark's an old timer from way back. Yeah, oh, yeah. He's an old timer. Oh, he used to call the nighttime yeah. show a lot. Yeah. yeah. Call the nighttime show. Yeah, but he got work and he got busy and he had things to do but it's good to have you here mark it really is oh how many of us remember you from wmca that's i mean i was a young kid but i remember you so that's another thing you must have been a kid in your bedroom listening under the covers pretty much yeah <laughs> but i had a very advanced at the time sony radio so that says something good good yeah. I want to thank Char uh, Charlene for being here. She's always here. We always love having her here. Sometimes she has something to say and sometimes she doesn't. But I think like a lot of you, she likes, feels good being part of the group. You know, oh, certainly she's, the do. Best. Yeah. she's the best. Yeah. Oh, thank you. So are you. Oh, thank no, you. No, she's not. No, she's not. <laughs> I love her. Uh, uh, thanks, uh, of course, to uh, Charlie Wallace and his wonderful T-shirt. And thanks, of course, to Andrew Deutsch. Always has something funny to say. A big thanks to Len Frisco, out in California, a regular. Francine Witt, another regular now. She's right here in Manhattan. We could, I could probably spit and reach her apartment. You know. Okay. Yeah, where are you? In I'm on 72nd in York. Oh, okay. so my God, my own neighborhood. Yeah. That's very nice. You can you see the Brooklyn Bridge from there and so on. and Not Brooklyn, but the... the, the 59th Street. 59th huh? Street. Oh, 59th Street. 59th Street. Just go right a block down to the river, and it's beautiful. Well, East that's River. where they did that great shot in Manhattan of Woody Allen of the bridge and that mm -hmm. little bench that's there and everything. Yeah. And thank you, Marjorie, for being here. What are, what's what's for dinner? <laughs> it's, not a surprise. it's a surprise. Okay. Yesterday sushi. We're gonna be <laughs> seeing you soon, aren't we? Um uh, Paula. Pretty soon. Yeah. When when? Uh, Two weeks. Not not this weekend, but uh, uh, coming, but the next weekend. The following yeah. weekend. I'm following hoping, weekend. We'll figure some way to keep you cool here. Because I'm cool. Turn on more I'm cool. Than cool. Ready. If, it, if the temperature is like today, it's perfect. <laughs> yeah. There yeah. you go. There you go. Hey, thank you for not uh, um, staying on politics. It's too depressing. Oh, oh no, I agree. No, no, no. I That's did it especially right. today, you know. And... Um, um, I, you know, I have a theory. Can I just say this fast? Biden's walking, you notice, is kind of hamper. And I think he's got what I have, which is uh, neuropathy. And that's what makes, him, makes it harder for him to walk. And to take, to take care of your neuropathy so that it doesn't hurt quite as much is uh, you take a, a thing called pregabalin. And I take pregabalin. And what it does is it affects my memory. And if he was, if he had was on a good dose of pregabalin when he was doing that debate, I can understand exactly why he was the way he was. You know, I uh, think he should have come out afterwards and said, you know, because you could tell he had a little bit of a cough or a cold or something. He should have said, dude, I was high as a kite. I was <laughs> on cold medicine and it affected me. That, yeah. that would have been, you know, I could have been like, oh, okay, maybe that makes sense. This is, then, you know, Trump walked uh, out like an old man, too. He was all slow. and well, he was all yeah. hunched over and everything. Yeah. You know, nobody, he forgets people's name. He can't remember the name of the doctor who said he had good, he was in good health. You know? Ronnie Johnson. Ronnie Johnson. Johnson, yeah. <laughs> How can you not for, remember a name like Johnson? He called him something <laughs> else. Jackson. See, I don't, I don't think that's as... No, his I, name I screw is up really on names Ronnie all the time. Jackson. Yeah, his, his real name is really Jackson. Jackson. You call him Johnson. Yeah. 
But then he, slip. You know, he's <laughs> claiming that, you know, Biden can't remember names and then he can't remember the name of that doctor. No, and, he went on 10 minutes talking. I about am always person. a pleasure having you here. Are you at work right now? Yes. Me? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yes, I can yes. tell because of the ceiling <laughs> and that industrial lighting out in there. We should all look at Brian because it's nice to see somebody actually working. I like it. Yeah, where's Mandy? Oh, Mandy's oh, usually working. Andy's Andy's running running the country. Country. I'm here running the oh, country. Andrew's, <laughs> Andrew's, Andrew's in the Oval Office. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Politics. Run, Andrew, <laughs> run. I'll vote, for, I'll vote for you. Thank you, Vernon. We really appreciate it. Appreciate you being here. And Jason, call again. Boy, it's been a great, isn't he a great addition to the group? Yeah. Can we all vote him in? Yeah, we have to <laughs> vote him onto the island, right? You get the rose. Thanks to all of you. And we sign off, of course, with the immortal words of Edward Berger, who says, That's all, folks. Okay. Bye-bye, everybody. Have a nice week. Thank you, Alex. Have a good four. Okay.